A Brief History of the Empire, Part 4, by Stronach Kothodge III, Imperial Historian. The first book of this series described, in brief, the first eight emperors of the Septim dynasty, beginning with Tiber I. The second volume described the War of the Red Diamond and the six emperors who followed. The third volume described the troubles of the next three emperors, the frustrated Uriel IV, the ineffectual Sephiris II, and the heroic, heroic Uriel V. On Uriel V's death across the sea in distance, in distant, hostile Akavir, Uriel VI was but five years old. In fact, Uriel VI was born only shortly before his father left for Akavir. Uriel V's only other progeny by a Morganatic alliance were the twins Moriahatha and Eloisa, who had been born a month after Uriel, the, Uriel V left. Uriel VI was crowned in the 290th year of the Third Era. The imperial consort, Thonica, as the boy's mother, was given a restricted regency. Um, sorry, as the boy's mother, was given a restricted regency until Uriel VI reached his majority. The elder council retained the real power as they had ever since the days of Kataria I. The council so enjoyed its unlimited and unrestricted freedom to promulgate uh, promulgate laws and generate profits, that Uriel the Sixth was not given full license to rule until 307, when he was already 22 years old. He had been slowly assuming positions of responsibility for years, but both the council and his mother, who enjoyed even her limited re regency, were loath to hand over the reins. By the time he came to the throne, the mechanisms of government gave him little power except for that of the imperial veto. This power, however, he regularly and vigorously exercised. By 313, Uriel VI could boast with conviction that he truly did rule Tamriel. He utilized defunct spy networks and guard units to bully and coerce the difficult members of the Elder Council. His half-sister, Morihatha, was, not surprisingly, his staunchest ally, especially after her marriage to Baron Ulf Gerson of Winterhold brought her considerable wealth and influence. As the sage Ugarij said, Uriel V conquered Esroniot, but Uriel VI con conquered the Elder con Council. When Uriel VI fell off a horse and could not be resuscitated by the finest imperial healers, his beloved sister Morihatha took up the imperial tiara. At 25 years of age, she had been described by, admitted, admittedly, self-serving, diplomats as the most beautiful creature in all of Tamriel. She was certainly well-learned, vivacious, athletic, and a well-practiced politician. She brought the Arch Magister of Skyrim to the Imperial City and created the second Imperial Battle Mage since the days of Tiber Septim. Morihatha uh, finished the job her brother had begun and made the Imperial Province a true co government under the Empress, and later the Emperor. Outside the Imperial Province, however, the empires had been slowly disintegrating. Open revolutions and civil wars had raged unchallenged since the days of her grandfather, Severus II. Carefully coordinating her counterattacks, Morihatha slowly claimed back her rebellious vassals, always avoiding overextending herself. Though Morihatha's military campaigns were remarkably successful, her deliberate pace often frustrated the council. One councilman, an Argodian who took the Colovian name of Thoricles Romus, furious at her refusal to send troops to his troubled Black March, is commonly believed to have hired the assassins who claimed her life in Third Era 339. Romus was summarily tried and executed, though he protested his innocence to the last. Morihatha had no surviving children, and Eloisa had died as a fever, of a fever four years before. Eloisa's 25-year-old son, Pelagius, was thus crowned Pelagius IV. Pelagius IV continued his aunt's work, slowly bringing back under his wing the radical and refractory kingdoms, duchies, and baronies of the empires. empire. He exercised Morihatha's poise and circumspect pace in his endeavors, but alas, he did not attain her success. The kingdoms had been free of constant constraint for so long that even a benign imperial presence was considered odious. Nevertheless, the Pelagius, when Pelagius died after a notably stable and prosperous 29-year reign, Tamriel was closer to unity than it had been since the days of Uriel I. 
Our current emperor, his awesome and terrible majesty, Uriel Septim the Seventh, son of Pelagius the Fourth, has the diligence of his great aunt Morihatha, the political skill of his great uncle Uriel the Sixth, and the military prowess of his great grand uncle Uriel the Fifth. For twenty one years he reigned and brought justice and order to Tamriel. In the third era in the year third era three hundred eighty nine, however, his imperial battle mage, Jagar Tharn, betrayed him. Uriel the Seventh was imprisoned in a dimension of Tharn's creation, and Tharn used his sorcery of illusion to assume the Emperor's aspect. For the next ten years, Tharn abused imperial privilege but did not continue Uriel the Seventh's schedule of reconquest. It is not yet entirely known what Tharn's goals and personal accomplishments were during the ten years he masqueraded as his liege lord. In Third Era 399, his enig an enigmatic champion defeated the battle mage in the dungeons of the imperial palace and freed uriel the seventh from his other dimensional jail since his emancipation uriel the septum the seventh has worked diligently to renew the battles that would reunite tamriel tharn's interference broke the momentum it is true but the years since then have proven that there is a hope of the golden age of tiber septum's rule glorifying tamriel once again